Not that I'm suspicious or anything, but I've just walked, you know, 10 paces from the car. And it's the same car in the same place many, many times. And I've got a little coin, which normally means I won't find anything for hours now, but straight away, bang, a tiny little coin. Yes, a denier, probably 1600s. And there it is, you can see it's a tiny, tiny little mite. Now it might actually be a Napoleon Trois one centime, which is one of my favorite coins to find. Very little signal, as you can imagine. Big coil, small signal. Well, I'm searching hard and I'm finding rubbish, which is, in a sense, a good sign that there's more to be found. But apart from that little one cent from 1860 down at the end there, have found nothing. But we soldier on. So I might have had something then. It's one of them dead tops. Oh yes. So it's dry and dusty and I'm not getting much depth. I'm getting like six inches on a reasonably decent coin. And I expect to get nine, ten inches. But anyway, when it rains and maybe when it gets a little bit more compact, I'm gonna get more depth. So it'll be worth coming back then because a lot of the deeper coins will be closer to me. And I got one here. Tiny little whisper of a signal, but it was a signal nonetheless. And it's a coin. I don't know what it is. Probably a liard, could be anything. Have a look. I've seen the other side, but only in a flash. And that's not much. I thought maybe it's a button. Oh, maybe it is a bun. Maybe that's a shank of it. And there you go. There's the top. Now it don't look like a button. I don't know what that is. I mean, it looks like it's had something goes through the middle of it, but that can be because someone pierced it. Or it can be a washer. Who knows? Anyway, it's bronzy. Don't rub the washer. And uh, we'll check out what it is later. But anyway, got it. Well, second coin of the day. <laughs> it's been a couple of hours. But anyway, it's so a 20 centimes from 19... 45, I can't see it. You can probably see it, but I can. And I don't think I've ever found one of these before, so it's the first. And it's cut in half by the plough. Born to be wild, first find of the day, and it's a good one. Have a look at this. I can't say it was a very loud signal for such a big lump of brass stroke copper, but that's a dog head spout, barrel tap spout, which a spout. I don't know actually how they use them. I mean, you see these things on big copper brass uh, jugs, but actually that's not what it is. It's a barrel tap, and it's called a dog's head barrel tap. Well, I say it's not for that reason, because you find these, but I don't find the pot that goes with them, or fragments even, so it seems unlikely to me. Anyway, tractor coming, so I'm gonna have to stop in a second because it's gonna make such a racket. But anyway, dog head spout, very nice indeed. First coin of the day on the road of treasure. First motorbike of the day near the road of treasure. Anyway, the only interesting thing is that it was quite a low number and I would expect it to be in the 80s and it's in the 70s, but pff, this soil is so dry. I mean, really a drought conditions here, even though it's kind of been raining. I mean, it's very strange. But anyway, here it is in this hand. And it's a Napoleon Trois, five centimes of the emperor with the goatee. In the pocket it goes. It can't all be Celtic. Sometimes, in fact, most often, it's a blooming washer. And there's the blooming washer. But the good thing about a blooming washer is you missed it last time you were here, which means you could miss a Celtic or whatever. Or the farmer has turned up deeper stuff. Either way, it's good news. Obviously I've picked over this place quite a few times so pickings are thin. However, got a nice find down here on the ground. And there it is. I guess. 
Well, it is what it is, isn't it? If you know what I mean. What exactly that is, I don't know, but it's some kind of decoration. That looks like a hinge. So it's over something. Maybe that's just the top of a pipe. Maybe it's part of a brooch. Do new. But what I do know is it's nice. It's a nice thing. In the pocket it goes. The fines are coming in thick and slow. <laughs> I should say the fines are coming in thin and slow. Or oh, maybe thin and fast, but they're coming in thin. Anyway, got a nice one in here though, which is the third nice one, but that's all I found. Three things and they've all been nice. Well, I shouldn't complain, right? Anyway, have a look at this. This is a nice one. <laughs> was deep and this is a old old spindle well see that marks it out as being a medieval one in my book anyway and it's very very good indeed because I've got a bucket of spindle wells but not many old ones and this is an old one so I'm very happy with that don't rub the spindle well anyway There it is, 15th century, probably 1400s. That's my wild spindle whirl guess. Very happy indeed with that one. Musket ball. <laughs> Took me a fairly good amount of time to dig it up as well. Now, I like the hot program, but I don't like the hot program because it gives you so many little tiny hopeful signals that never turn into anything that you don't dig because they just go giggle, beep, beep, beep. But when you get a good signal, you get a good signal. And this is an example. And that says... Coin. There's no way or doubt that that is not a good find there or something worth digging. Nice to get one. Down there. I hope this is going to dig easily, but it's not. So I'm going to have to kind of chomp away at it. But it's kind of here. But, oh, that's a bit softer. Well, I'm going to have to use two hands for this. I'll get back to you when I found it. Well, it wasn't far. It didn't sound like it was. And that, ooh. And this is it. And that's a pre-revolutionary coin. Probably a so-called six. But we don't know yet. Let's go and have a closer look. Now it's a silly enough shape to be a Roman. And it's also almost thick enough. But I don't think it can be. But it well could be. It absolutely well could be. Well, I'm going to see if I can make out any details. But that's all we've got so far. And I'm calling that Roman. Yes, I am. Because it's an odd shape. But it's not quite odd enough. And it's thick. But it's not quite thick enough. 
so it's probably Louis the 15th but it could be Roman let's face it I want it to be Roman I found a Roman on this field just a tiny, tiny piece and there's Roman everywhere here but just very very uncommonly you'll find 200 coins for every Roman well maybe 500 even but anyway in fact I found three Romans and one gold so that tells you how rare the Roman is here but this is the right kind of shape a little bit thin though anyway I'll get back to you Now this looks very interesting, that's probably a ring. But the really, really old copper stuff gets encrusted like this. So this could be a little Roman. I'm hoping, obviously. Ooh, can't seem to break the surface. Nope, it's not gonna come. So maybe it's a button. Maybe that's actually a top of something. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. But that edge says Roman coin to me. But anyway, it's an old thing. And it's a copper stroke bronze thing. So I think this is going to be a lovely, but I think it's going to be very battered. Well, I think that's a little bag seal. I'm concentrated on this spot where I found that mystery coin because, well, a couple of nice things out here in about an hour and now this little bit of a seal. Suspicion that's a bit of a thing so it's going to go in the pocket. It might not be, but it might be. You never know. These odd shapes sometimes can turn into something. It's one of them! <laughs> uh, that's an interesting patch this, nothing major. I say that, but actually some nice finds so far. But nothing dense, just all spread out as if it's been travelled across rather than anything else. Well, we've got a gene rivet here. Well, there's your standard den here for you. Middle of the 1600s. It probably says Lear de France somewhere on there, but it's in with iron. I'm lucky I actually dug it out because it was very mixed signal. But anyway, I got it. <laughs>